24th of November. The 24th of November, Brother Joshua is going to come here. Brother Joshua Caravan is going to preach for us on the 24th of uh, November. And we have a wedding in Wigan in Brother Faustin's church. There's a brother called Brother Joe Mercy. And Joe Mercy in English. God thank you. <laughs> but as you can see, it's gonna get married on the 30th of November. So everyone is invited. If you have time, you can join us. And I would like to greet also uh, my friend, my brother, uh, Brother Ale. You can stand, you can greet you. This is uh, more than a brother for me. We came from afar with him. We, came, we used to live in the same house in Holland. So it's not his first time to come here just because some people never see you before that why I ask you to stand up. So this is more than a brother to me. We used to live in the same house for a long time. And we came here at the same time. <laughs> and now he's living in Birmingham. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And also, I'd like to greet Brother Nundo. God bless you. You don't have to stand. You are. <laughs> it's always a blessing when Brother Nundo comes to visit us. Thank you very much for coming, Brother Nundo. God bless you much. Amen. Okay, let us start for the reading of the word. Thank you for so many very good. I appreciate the job you're doing. God bless you. Genesis chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every form of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all fishes and the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Lord Jesus Christ, once more, Lord, we ask you to place the belief of the word, Lord. Give us, Lord, uh, what is inside, Lord. The revelation, Lord, that you gave to other to Able, Lord, is what we are seeking for now. Father, please come and have your mighty way, Lord. And speak yourself through my lips, Father. As we are expecting, Lord, to have your mighty way. Be blessed, Lord, be glorified in your mighty name, Jesus. We pray and we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Nice to see you again. Okay? Good. <laughs> Amen. So when, while you are sitting, uh, we are going to take the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. Looking for, and, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. So not so many people are looking for the coming of the day of God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because the day of God is uh, Malachi 4 where fire will come down and it's going to cook everything. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. As I said last time, it's a blessing. That's the only thing we are expecting now. And this one can happen anytime. We see all the decoration is always already there. We see our, how politics are going. We see everything is ready to bring the fire. Amen. But we are not afraid of it because we are hiding ourselves in Christ. Amen. As we said last time, these bodies are not us. These bodies are only the tabernacles or the dwelling place where we are living. And we just pray that our bodies are here in this tabernacle. Amen. 
And uh, the Bible says that once this tent is destroyed, there's another one waiting. It's not that God is going to prepare to come after, but it's already there. So once this one is destroyed, another one is waiting already. Praise be to God. And Satan doesn't like this one. <laughs> so nevertheless, you know, he said, wherein the, the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the, the, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. <laughs> Amen? The elements shall melt. You know what melt means. It's like you take a plastic, you put it in the fire, it's going to become a liquid. Yeah? So the elements will uh, melt with fervent heat. You never see such heat. So if you don't know, you want to have an idea, go and visit the volcano and see inside what kind of a heat is inside there. And it's going to be maybe more than that to burn everything because everything must be burned. Amen. We, we are not going to burn uh, alcohol with with prayers, we need a little fire. Amen. All the prostitutes on the street, there's, there's no uh, way to finish them with prayers. We are praying, we are praying, but they're still there. We have even more. <laughs> Amen. We have even more bad people in this in this world. The only way to kill them is to bring fire. Like it was in time of Noah. And the Bible says that the evil was everywhere. And so so many bad things was taking place and God decided now to bring the flood. And from there, now we are studying the, uh, the, the last step of the earth, how the earth is going to be uh, cleaned. God said, God said, I'm, I'm not going to destroy the world with fire, with water anymore. But Peter said that fire will come. Yes. Said, nevertheless, we, according to this promise, look for new heavens, amen, amen. and new earth, where in dwell, dwelleth righteousness, new heaven and new earth. And when fire will come, like in the time of Noah, when the flood came, after the flood, but Abraham said that it was a new world. And when the flood, uh, fire will come, it's going to be another new world which is going to come. And in that world will all, uh, only be righteousness. There's no sin. But before the fire, don't expect the sin to disappear. We are living there with it. Amen. Amen. But the thing is, we, we are living in the kingdom of Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. I should say last time that uh, we, we spoke about Three world war supposed to come. The first one we said, the first world war was number one, number two, world war number three. The first one we said it was. Uh, We said that the first world, world war was the what we say again? Um, we were talking about the the birth pen, okay? The birth pen. The first one was the first day. But I want to say that to bring a baby, uh, if the baby is coming, three things comes. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have first uh, water. water, and we have blood, and then we have life. He said it's the same with this world. And then we had our first world war, second world, uh, world war, and the last only one left. But as I said that, for the, the last one we have two wars we are talking about. We have Gog and Magog, yes? Mm -hmm. And we, all, we, have, we have also Armageddon. Okay? Mm. So now we have only one left, the last one, which we bring fire. Okay? Mm. But we still have two world war to come. Amen? Mm. So now we need to find out how 
it's going to happen. Because only one world war left. So we must see what's going to happen. And we're going to read what Barabara tells us. In the message, uh, questions and answers on the seals. Someone asked a question, said, will you ex please explain how Satan is bound a thousand years, uh, bound a thousand years, being loosed again for the battle of Revelation 28. That's not the battle of Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon takes place on this side. So the battle of Armageddon takes place before the millennium. But the battle of uh, God and Magog will take place after the millennium. So this one is the literal fire, okay? <coughs> This one is fire. The same way this one was. Okay. And Barbara said that this one was the birth pen for the earth. He said, in the same way, when the birth pen is coming for the woman who is in travel, it's the same way that the birth pen is coming for the globe, for the, the earth. He said, and to the end of the last day, the, the earth will bring forth another world, which is the new world. But now here, God and Magog is what's going to bring fire. Okay. If this one is going to bring fire, that means it's what we call the World War III. But what is Armageddon? That's the question. But I'm saying that Armageddon takes place before the millennium and God and Magog takes place after. So before, what happened? What is that? See, all right, at, at when the tribulation period has ended. Now, what relation does this have with the battle of God and Magog? So, someone asked the question, what the relationship between both uh, worlds? And by one answer the question said, no, one is this thousand years, and the other one is the end of thousand years. So, this is, let's say this is thousand years. Okay, this is thousand years. So, Armageddon is here, and God and Magog is there. Okay, one comes before and one comes after. Amen. He said, and, uh, as mentioned in the, uh, in the fourth scene, will God, God, will God and Magog be gathered from people on New Earth? Satan was loosed out of his prison and went to gather all the people, the wicked, to bring them to this place. And God went fire and brimstone out of heaven. And they were consumed, see, two battles all together. Indeed, you see, during thousand years, Satan is bound. Okay? But my man said that before the fire to come, before to go to the end, Satan must get loose. He must be released from his prison. Why is he going to be released? Because he's going to bring now fire. There's no way, there's no evil in God to destroy. It must be those people, they will be anointed by Satan to bring now fire after. And after these thousand years, amen? After the fire will come, then we go again in the new world. Amen. Praise God. Satan was loosed out of his prison and went to gather all the people. Now, Satan is going to gather people. Now, the question is where Satan is going to gather them. Because Satan is going to come from, uh, from the battle. And Satan is always fighting with, against Christ. Now, we have there, the battle was here. We have 
the white white horse okay white horse and God had the lion Satan came with a red red horse and God sent what uh, ox and the black horse God sent men the four living creatures and the last one was a pale a pale horse okay and God sent the eagle so this one was the last battle so when we reach this step here is the end of the battle and this battle Christ will gather people, his people and uh, Satan also will gather his people for that great battle. Amen. 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 We see what the Bible is going to tell us. And watch, from the four corners of earth, they gather them, gathers them to Armageddon. That's Satan. The Bible said, I'm trying to think of the scriptures. As I got them wrote down here, I am calling them, but just where they are written down. See what they are. God has them together to the great day of the battle of the Lord, is what Peter said. The great day of the Lord. He said, What now? On this mixed colored, worldly, pale, sick horse. Just think of it. You know that's a bad thing. Now watch where he got us them. From the four corners of the earth. They are gathering now for the showdown. The showdown will be at Armageddon according to the word. So Satan is gathering people from the four corners of the earth for the great battle. Now the question is that what are those people? Because if this is the battle of fire, it must be also military force. Amen. If it's going to gather the military force to go and fight. But with guns, you can't fight Christ with guns. Because this battle is Christ is going to fight. Amen. Now Satan will gather his people. Where? On the perils, riding on it with a death with the name take on him, death, the Antichrist, lesson, Antichrist first denomination that can't be disputed, with his Jezebel, a prostitute to the world, with her daughters, with her Protestants, gathering themselves together now in, in unity. So what Satan is gathering, is gathering all the denominations. Are you free? Now, it's the battle between the denomination against the word. <laughs> Amen. Are you free, Brother Clement? Yes. Between the denomination and the word. But I'm not now to explain the battle of Armageddon. Otherwise, we, go, we, we get mixed up with those two battles. Because we have only one world war left, which is going to be the fight. Two of them took place already. Amen. That is the reason why we must study to know exactly what is Armageddon and what is God and Marco. Why? Because God and Marco is what is going to bring the new world. As we spoke in the book of Noah. Because it's Genesis uh, the sixth chapter. In the book of Noah, when the flood came, the new world came. And now, after the uh, 1,000 years, when Satan will be released, then we see God and Magog will come to bring another new world, with it, which is going to be the last one. And in that new world, there will be only righteousness. Remember, Brother Malam said that the millennium is not a perfect world. It's not a perfect world. The perfect world is coming after the fire will come down. As we read like that in the, the future home, Brother Malam said that. Uh, he said that uh, in the millennium, the millennium in the seventh day, amen. The seventh day, the, the feast of 
tabernacle. Mm -hmm. But he said after that what came? The eighth day. He said the eighth day is just going back to the first day. Mm -hmm. We spoke about it that God was dealing with individuals first. God did the job of redemption in reaching the end of it. Until Jesus said that I go to prepare a place for you. When I come back, I'll come back with that, those places. And but the Bible said what Paul says that there's a tent waiting for you. He said Jesus was talking about the bodies. Those bodies came with the Lord, which are always there. But God had to deal now with the earth to clean all those mess you see there. And, and, and then we're gonna get in the righteous world. Otherwise, the seed will remain. That's the reason why when you are in the flesh, you must expect things to happen. Praise be to God. Amen. And this one, everyone is, is waiting for it. When you see everything is taking place, everyone is saying that, oh, now we are in the end time. This is the end time. But, but what I'm saying, the end time is the last week of the seventh week of death. Amen. That's the end time. The end time, when you see all those things, taking place, that means we are over the end time. We are not in the end time anymore because the end time even too is ended already. Now, in the dispensation, we are in the eighth day. But for the world, every science has been given. In time of Lord, when God sent the angels to destroy, God sent three people, yes? And the man told us, explained unto us, what was those people in our days? Amen. We saw all our robots. We saw uh, who? Billy Graham. And we saw Palawan. He said two of the angels went to preach to blind people. Now, when we are talking now, amen, when we are talking now, those three angels, they are no longer here. Amen. Mm. This one is the sign. I don't know if if we are believers. You know when uh, Bill Graham died, mm. that one was a great sign for me. When I saw Bill Graham, because Bill Graham was the last one, remember, when Bill Graham died, I said it's now finished. So from now, you must expect fire to come any time. Amen. Because the last sign was that God sent the angels to tell Lord to get out of Sodom because it's going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. That one was the last sign. And another sign was homosexuality and everything was taking place. As I said last time, what we have today is more than Sodom. Mm -hmm. We have so many mess. In that time, it was maybe only homosexuality. But today we have, as I said, we have homosexuals, we have transgenders, and we have uh, uh, bisexual as well. So now the people they don't have, they call it sex orientation. And now they are forcing people to accept it. If now you try to say something against it, they will arrest you. So you must try to accept it. But we won't accept it. Amen. Even in the class, in the cartoons, the they are trying to get people to use to, to that mm. These people, they are talking about democracy. The democracy means we are free, isn't it? So if someone is homosexual, that's his business. But why do, why do you force me to believe it or to accept it? It's my own opinion. I can say, no, I don't want to take it. But they will force you to take it. I was uh, last week in London. I saw uh, uh, advertisements. Someone was standing there in the picture said, I'm not afraid of my sex orientation. Or I'm not ashamed of it. I said, the reason why you are saying that is because you are ashamed of it. <laughs> Amen. Because me, I'm normal. Isn't it? The way I am, I don't have to take a picture and put in the world to tell people I'm not ashamed of what I am. The reason why you are saying that is because you are ashamed of it. You want to make people, to bring people to accept it. 
You know, sometimes even animals, they are better than us. As I said last time, when the flood was coming, all the animals got in the ark. When people was uh, enjoying, like it, it was in Thailand, I think, when the flood was coming, all the elephants, all the animals, they went up to the mountain, and people, uh, as dressed, was enjoying and uh, rejoicing. But the flood was coming. Amen. Why they are like that? Because they are away from God. Those signs showing us that the time we are living in is the last one. Yeah. This world is ready to give the birth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there is no other planet for us. Now what they are doing? Some of them they are looking for a better place now. That is the reason why they are sending all those rockets to see if there is water in the moon. <laughs> Listen. There's no way to go to the moon to live. There's no planet for you to live. The only one planet has been given unto us is this earth. God gave us a perfect planet. When Adam was here, this place was so perfect for you and me to live. And they came with uh, uh, all those things they did, the science, everything, they destroyed everything. Amen? Now, the only way God can clean this earth again and God is able to do it. The way he done it in terms of no. And you know that what Bhagavan said that Bhagavan said, he said, when the flag came, you know where the flag came from. Mm -hmm. Those people was doing their experiences because, because you know after the flag everything started anew. But before the flag, the world was developed like today. They had science developing in science. They've done all things we have today, even more. They had even more. Amen. Even my mom said the pyramids was built before the flood. But we still have them there. And they had to send all rockets on the uh, all bombs there. They made the clouds and the clouds brought the flood. Amen. But uh, the, the rain and the rain brought the flood. And everything was renewed again. And it's going to happen the same way today. When everything is corrupted, and when everything is away from God, and it seems that God doesn't have any control of this world anymore, God will never leave it like that. Amen. As I always say that, one day I was uh, standing in the shopping center, seeing people going everywhere, going buying stuff, things like that. I said, oh, can you imagine you've got your children? Amen. You create people, but those people on Sunday, instead of you give them only just one day to come and worship you. But those people on Sunday, what are they doing? They are going fishing. They are going football match. They are, going, they are, they are doing something else than worshiping you. How can you feel? Amen. You create people to worship you, but they are not doing it. So, what is the point of keeping those people? It's like you buy a car, amen, to serve you. If you want to go uh, to the north, you use the car. But all of a sudden, the car is not working anymore. For so, tell me, what is the point to keep the car? Man? So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it. So, if the car is no, it's no longer working, what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it to a scrapyard. They're going to destroy it. That's what God is going to do. Because God wanted the perfect world with the perfect people as it was with Adam. That the reason why we had all the redemption until the end of it to bring back the world in his position again. Mm -hmm. And this one will come. Praise be to God. With her doctors, with her Protestant gathering themselves together now in unity. So, what the Antichrist is doing? Today, if you see, everything is united. You see, even the uh, Pentecostal bishops, they, they are dressing themselves like a pope now. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that all of them, they'll go back to the Catholic. But I'm saying that Pentecostal church will be worse than Catholic church. If you go in Catholic church, you go there and you see there's a reverence there. Mm -hmm. You see, people, when they get in the church, they are quiet and uh, soft music are playing. 
But if you go to the Pentecostal churches, <laughs> you see the way <laughs> uh, girls are dressing. You ask yourself, am I in the church or not? <laughs> you go outside by Kevin. You find the same people. You come in the church, you find the same people. Now you're asking yourself, am I, where am I? Where is God? Because in the nightclub, they are dressing the same. In the church, they are dressing the same. So, where are we? <laughs> We are confused, isn't it? Long time ago, if you get in the church, you feel the atmosphere of the church, quiet time, reverence, people respecting God. Because we know that when we are coming to the church, we are coming to meet the Almighty. When we are there, we must be respectful and waiting until God is going to take over. Amen. But today, if you go to those churches, you see so all kind of things. And when they are playing music, I'm telling you, <laughs> even in the concert, they don't play the music like that. One day I was invited by, by my friend, he said, oh, come, you have uh, someone who could have come from uh, Africa and a preach. I said, okay, let me go for another day, me too, I'm going to invite him here. Mm -hmm. So I went there, they started playing music, oh God. <laughs> I never heard that such a loud, loud music. No reverence, no respect, and they are pretending to serve God. And those things there, they are just the world in the church. Mm -hmm. And things like that, God will never take it. The only way to finish with it, fire must come down. That's the reason why Paul, uh, yeah, uh, Peter spoke about it. He said that every element will melt. The only Thinking melts, everything is fire. The last one. Hmm. Now, in Revelation 19, not only is he gathering, uh, getting ready, but Christ is getting ready to meet him. The battle is going to be not uh, uh, be hot and heavy. <laughs> Christ in Revelation 19, Christ is gathered, uh, is gathered, he is not from the four corners of the earth, listen, because there's going to be a battle, uh, a little bitty, a little bitty remnant. What he is doing, he is gathering them from the four corners of heaven. Now the question is, what is heaven? But I'm saying that heaven is the atmosphere. Amen? Mm. The heaven is here. The hell also is here. Now it depends in which world you are living. Because the children of God, they are living in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And God will gather his children uh, from the four corners of the heaven in the heavenly place of Jesus. The word of God. Those people, they are nothing else than the word of God. Mm. Now, it's going to be the battle between the word and the denomination. <laughs> Amen. Mm. And the Bible says that when Jesus will come, the last enemy is going to put under his feet is going to be death. Death is going to be the last enemy. So, death is the denomination. All those forces during the seven church ages, when you reach the last age, Jesus will come also with his children to finish the battle. So now when we reach the last step of this battle, Satan's power is over. That means Satan will never deceive anymore like he did with Eve. Now you tell me that, oh, we still fall in sin. Yes, that's another thing. But what I'm talking here is about the soul. In our souls, there's no sin anymore. Because the sin is the the, the sin, what sin is? Sin is unbelief. Amen. Amen. But I'm saying that the, the, the lamb was on the throne for uh, intercession because of the ignorance of the people. But when the book is open, if you are ignorant, that's your business. Because we know now who we are. And when the book is open, there's no way for Satan to act. It's finished. Amen. Amen. As you 
let's say the, the last, the first, the last scene, uh, sign. The last sign was the last sign was all those three angels. Abraham said, "Look, God gives her." And uh, said, "Listen to this clause. I'm closing." Her final sign, her final message, her final sign, her final sign is she has to get in the conditions like she was at the beginning. The world, the, the world, the church. That's true, yeah? Then we get on the final side. In Luke, the 17th chapter, the 28th verse, Jesus said, And it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For as it was in Sodom, see? Now Jesus read the same, this same Bible. The same Genesis we read now. Close, don't miss it. The same Bible we read, Jesus read and he said to his church, look back and see when the days of Sodom returns again. Perverted people, men losing their natural. Is it true? So the last sign was God in human flesh. What God did in that time, God spoke to Abraham. Tell Abraham what was taking place behind his back. Sarah was laughing. And Baraman said that God was about to curse Sarah, but because Sarah uh, was Abraham's wife, she was saved. And those one was signs. When you see now those signs, God in human flesh, doing the same thing he did when he was here, when he was in Sodom, that means we are in the end. This one is the sign showing us that the fire is ready to come, to finish this step here, to get us to the new world. Amen. Amen. Look at the homosexual, the homosexual. How it's on the increase across the world today. Now here we are in 1965. Amen. Today we are in 2019, almost 2020. More than 50 years. Amen. But I'm speaking about the increase, increasing of homosexuality. That's why I'm saying today we have more. Of I he said, of I think is 20 or 13 uh, percent even government people has proven to be homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine those people are leading us today? A couple, of, a couple of years ago in France, the mayor of Paris was homosexual. In the government, we have them everywhere. So those people are leading us today, they are homosexual. So homosexuality now gets to the top of the government. So what God can do with such things? The only solution is to bring fire. Amen. Blessing fire. <laughs> so when the fire will come, then you go to the new home. Amen. Amen. A great bunch of even government people has proven to be homosexuals. You government men know that. Your magazine, I read it, and in the different things had taken place. And now just before the climate of the climax of the destruction came. God operated to Abraham in many forms. The reason why they are forcing us to accept it is because themselves they are homosexuals. Mm -hmm. That's why they are forcing us to believe it, to accept it. Mm -hmm. They know that we, we, we are not going to believe it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. There was a, a woman in a, in the USA. She she was she she's a baker. She's making uh, uh, wedding cakes, birthday cakes. And two people came, they're homosexuals. They came and said, okay, we are getting married. We want you to make, make us a, a cake, wedding cake. And we pay anything you ask as money. And that woman said, listen, you and your money, get out. <laughs> Amen. And do you know what happened? 
she was arrested. She was arrested for that. Listen, I'm the better. I'm the one who's doing the job. Listen, there's so many people doing wedding cakes. Mm -hmm. Go and find yourself someone else. Why do you want me? Because they want to get us in that business. Amen. Amen. But it's not going to work. <laughs> Guys, get ready. <laughs> if you refuse, they arrest you. Now you have to make choice. If you don't have enough Christ in you, Amen, mm -hmm. they will get you. Yeah. You say, okay, let me just accept it. For them to leave me alone. But you must know that. Mm -hmm. God, God will know that you accept it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, this is the world where we are going. We are living in. So, the only way for God to clean this place is to bring fire. Amen. I'm going to pray soon. I'm not going to be wrong today. He was a man. And he came, came up to God. He said, it wasn't a man. It was God in the man. Abraham, Abraham called him Elohim. It was a man. This one is the sign. All those signs. Now, sometimes we just rejoice. Wow, God in human flesh. Wow, God designed the thought of the people. But do you know that those ones are the signs that the fire is coming? So when people, when you're rejoicing like that, Get ready for the fire. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, those ones they are the signs. Even when Balabalam was calling people on the prayer line, it's not because Balabalam is a good man. No, Balabalam was trying to show them the sign that God is again here. God in human flesh, deserving your fault. Doing everything he did in his first coming is to show the people that he is here. Amen. Amen. So many people, they have seen those things, but they are expecting something more to come again. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are not John the Baptist. They can't read the signs. The children of God, they read signs. When they see signs, they know the time we are living in. If you see the, all those signs, you know that even the redemption must own. Mm -hmm. Because God will never clean the earth without bringing Adam back in mm -hmm. his position first. Mm -hmm. And God did it. He said, uh, he said the, 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 I mean, he said the, uh, the prophet. And he came to open the book. When the book was open, it was man was uh, getting back in this position. We saw today Adam getting back in this position. Whatever, what do you see today? We are people full of mistakes. But, Inside of us, we are without sin. Amen. Because Jesus came to take our place. So Jesus is perfect. So if Jesus takes my place, he takes my sin, and give, Jesus gives me his nature. If Jesus is perfect, who I am? I'm a perfect man. I can have a mistake. Amen? But I am perfect. But I want to say that, if you take a grain of uh, wheat or a grain of whatever, if you plant it, before to get life from that grain, the grain must die. Not only die, but also it must rot. He said, is what is taking place now. This world is dead. The economy is rotting. Nothing is going to work. You see, everyone wants to go to America from Africa and say, oh, I want to go to USA. Do you know that the USA has got more deaths than Congo? <laughs> yes, those countries you are calling the rich countries, actually they are poor countries. Because if I've got nothing and no debts, that means I'm rich. But someone who has got nothing, because you, you can't have debts and be rich, <laughs> Amen. You can't be rich and you have debts. Because if you are rich, you pay your debts. That means that America is living below zero. You understand? Even Congo is more rich than America. We have debts, but not like America. Because it's the 
the, the, uh, the cattle, the one that's called no death. Do you understand? Now, they are trying to tell us that America is a rich country. Mm. But I'm saying that America is doomed. America was condemned already. So now, the only way for them to come back, they must bring the war. It was, it, it was for that in the Second World War. No, nothing was going back. It was because of the economy. Most of all the World War we have, they are because of the economy. Once the economy is getting back, they bring war to destroy everything to start a new. See, this time again, they are going to do the same, the same. So when they are going to bring fire, they think that is going to help us to start a new. But this one, but I'm saying that this time, they've got all the cobalt bombs, they've got all the uranium bombs, they are going to kill everyone. And it's going to be the end of this earth. And us, as believers, we're going to get that new earth. Last side, I'm closing. Now, that's what was going on in that day. Just to show the last sign that Abraham saw, the elected group put out away from Sodom. What is Sodom? Sodom is Laodice and Church Age. Mm. Now, don't miss this parable. Whatever you do, the group that had been put out, that wasn't in Sodom to begin with. Mm. Amen? But two of the angels went down into Sodom. And when they got down there, we found Lot, and he found him a backsliding condition. Mm. All homosexuals and perversions, you know the story. Listen to this. But two of the crew, uh, the angels went down in Sodom. And when they got there, the, no, no, I want to read something here. Uh, said, uh, but the group that had been put out that wasn't in Sodom to begin with. So that, that group was put out of Sodom, wasn't in Sodom. It was out of Sodom. And what happened? That group was Abraham. Abraham was out of Sodom. And when the discernment of the thought was happening to Abraham, in Sodom they were rejoicing. So that group is what we call the bride. But you must know that when the discernment of the thought was happening, it wasn't in Sodom. It was out of Laodicea church age, where God was revealing himself to his people. And there, those two angels was blinding people. And that blindness, came until to so-called message believers. Those who are waiting for Christ after the discernment of the heart of the people. Those who are waiting for Christ after seeing everything Christ did in this age. I always say that if Christ comes today, what is going to do? <laughs> what Christ is going to do if he comes today? <laughs> Let me close. <laughs> but two of the angels went down in Sodom, and when they got down there, we found Lot, and he found him a backsliding condition. All of the sexual. He said, You know the story, but there's one that stayed with Abraham. Which one was Elohim? They, they preached the word down there, preaching the word, smelling them blind, and they couldn't find. The door. That's what it is today. Today, we, we are not looking for the sign because the last sign took place already. Let me get the last quote here and then I'll finish. And look, you are part of that count. Is that right? And when he redeemed you, he redeemed the earth with the same thing. And you are together again. And how much plainer can, uh, can it be? See, you have to be redeemed because you are part of it. And if the blood don't drop on you, you don't redeem yet. 
you are not caught, then he cleans it. That's the same thing he does in the fire. Uh, in the fire, even the blood drop is yet got to be cleansed by fire. That's right for a dwelling place for God. So this earth must be cleansed by fire for the dwelling place of God. We saw with uh, like human being, it's happened. The redemption of man. Water, which, which is justification, sanctification, which is, which is the word of God, and fire, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And God will dwell in the human being. For the earth, it was flood, which was the justification. The, last, the, the second step was the blood, which was the sanctification. And the last step, it must be fire of God and Magog. And as Barabam said that, God will live in the, this earth. With his people, and in that uh, time, there will be no sin, no physical sin, no homosexuality, no everything you see there. Everything will be uh, restored, mm. physical speaking. Amen. Amen. But right now, we are redeemed already. But the earth also must be redeemed to bring us, to take us to the new world. Amen. I have to stop here because people are coming after us. God bless you.